This is Pastor Stephen Amaker. And this is Lady A. And this is the radio broadcast of Deliverance by Faith Ministry. Psalms 138 and 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth you. This is the year of perfection, so that we will be able to carry the weight of His glory. So open your ears and open your heart and receive what God has placed in our spirit for you today. God bless you, and God bless everybody out there, and mainly all the blessings and, and thanking the Lord for being here. And to our co-host and partner also, Minister James, God bless you, brother. God bless you all. How's everyone doing today? We're doing very well, very well. I'm, 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 I guess, and I'm sitting here, and I'm listening to that song that I love that song but it just occurred to me and the Lord said after all I do for you and you want to know how much what no what's in it for you what's in it for me we owe you indebted to work for God you're indebted to him. Amen. <laughs> you 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 really just ought to be, you know, all the time like, Lord, what else can I do? Come on. What else can I do for you? What else? What else? After all after all, like I said, after all he's done for us, he woke us up. He woke us up this morning. That's right. He started throwing our way. He took us throughout our day. He brought us back home. He let us do everything we want to do. And yes. you, you want to charge God for every little thing that you do. Are, uh-huh. you, serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? I mean, you, you, your, your mathematics, 
your mindset must be wrong. You, you, you should be, you should, you should, watch this. We should not go a day, we should not let a day go by without doing something for the Lord. Come on. Big or small, big or small, uh -huh. it, 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 you should do something. Your day should, you should have one, you should, Lord, say, look, look Lord, I want to do something for you today. Let, yeah. Tell me what would you like for me to do for you today. And, 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 and like I said, don't put a price tag on it. All right. Pastor Mike said, for all the blessings, for all the blessings that he has done, huh, man, come on. You ought to be, you ought to be, you know, just, just, just ecstatic when God say to do something. Just ecstatic when He tell you to witness. Just, a, yeah, sure, Lord, I'll do that. What else you want me to do? Mhm. Mm we got this thing messed up. I think we got our mindset. I think we got our mindset messed up. Let's okay. This is uh, for those of you that are just joining us. This is part two to our Tuesday night Bible study. And our Tuesday night Bible study topic was, what's in it for me? All right. And that, that was taken from Roman, or rather, Rev, excuse me, Revelation 21st chapter. Revelation. But I don't think we got past the eighth verse. That's right. So, because there were so many things in there. And so, in meditation and prayer, the Lord took me, took us to, he said, it's not time yet. Not time yet. Not time yet to go further uh, with all the, because the, there's things that we don't need. Watch this. There are some things that we don't need to peruse through. There are some things that we need to stop. Pay attention and watch and look and make sure that we got it right. Mm -hmm. All right. Watch, watch this because we only got one today. That's <laughs> yeah. There's no do overs. Mm -hmm. There's no can I get a? There's no can I get another chance? No. There's no. There's no. Um, while while you're on this side, every day that you are living, you have another chance. But once it's mm -hmm. over, you can't go there and come back. You right. can't get a chance. You got to make sure that you got it right before you, before before leaving Earth. You better make sure that you got it right. Come on. And and it's sad to say that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of churches that don't teach and don't preach, and, it, and, it, and it's like give God. Give give the preacher your hand, give God your heart, and here's your ticket to heaven. So all you got to do is just ride. No, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's more to it than that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can, watch this. You can come down to the altar. You can fall on the floor. You can cry as all you want, roll at the whole church, and still get up and go to hell. That's right. That's right. When all that's over, God is requiring one thing from you. What is that? For you to live holy. Without mm -hmm. living holy, with, 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 uh, without living holy, no man, no man should make it. You, don't, you can't make it in. If, if there's sin, as long as there's sin in your life, I'm sorry, you're not mm -hmm. going to heaven. Well, my pastor said, well, your pastor told you wrong. <laughs> and, 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 and anybody else tell you, you, okay, uh, like I always say, today's, today's teaching is you can be saved in sin. How you, wait a minute. Saved means set apart, come from, come out of. You're a product and you, you belong to God now. So how can you be saved and in sin, still in sin? If any man be a new creature, he's a new cre uh, uh, 
He's a, uh, any man be in Christ, he's a creature. All men have passed away. Mm-hmm. That's it. Did I? How can you be in and out at the same time? It's impossible. Hello? Amen. Amaker, are you there? I can't hear. Uh, Apostle. I hear you, Pastor Mike. Yes. I hear you, Mr. James. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're, you're not supposed to be married and single. You can't, well, uh-oh, there you go. You can't be married and single at the same time. Huh? Come on. You, 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 you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't be married and single at the same time. One of you guys talk for a while. I need to re uh, do my Skype. Minister James, could you carry on, please? Oh, uh, amen. Uh, I kind of missed some of that, but yeah. Uh, I think he was talking about we're going to be in Ezekiel tonight. And, uh, you know, a very good chapter here. I'm just glad when we go ahead on into it. But like he was saying earlier, uh, sin is something that the law brought on. The law showed us how how sin makes us as the imperfect. But through Christ Jesus, like the apostle was saying, uh, we are we are new. We are brand new. And it's like it's like a start over. When you say we saved, that means we exempt from the wrath of God. When we get saved, we exempt from that wrath. And so uh, what we need to do is is follow the teachings of, of Christ, you know, and when we follow those teachings of Christ, we won't have to worry ever again about being bound by the law, which is, is, is just, you know, uh, the law is, is the letter, the, the Old Testament, so to speak. But, um, you know, being saved is, is not hard, but then if, if you don't believe something, it's, it's hard to make a person believe something. If you got your mindset that, you know, you want to live the way you want to live, Uh-oh. then the Lord is not going to, uh, he's not going to put no pressure on you, but he made the way for us to be saved. All we have to do is walk in that. And when we walk in, in, in the newness of, of life, you won't have to worry uh, about sin anymore. Now, because the law, it had something like a, 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 a hold on a person. A bound. I think that's Roman when it says when a man and a woman is married, she is bound to her husband. Bound. That means the only way she can get free is that he dies. The only way she gets free from that marriage is that he dies. Same thing with this law uh, and sin. Okay? Uh, as long as the law existed, you see, we are bound. But we have to break free from that thing. We have to break it. Jesus died on the cross, and he broke the yoke of bondage. So we never have to go there, but we have to believe it. We have to believe it. If we don't believe it, then, yes, we are, we are bound, and, and sin is going to reign in our life. It, it, it's going to reign. Uh, it, it's hard to uh, break something like this, really hard, especially if, if, if you was in it for, forever, so to speak. We cannot um, see uh, newness of life. We cannot see Christ if if we are still uh, touching back on, on, on the law, so to speak. So what I'm saying is that anyone that said that they are a believer, you know, they are free. They are free from this law, anyone. But if you continue doing something that's not right, 
then I question that whether you are free or not. Because like we were talking about the husband and the wife, she's bound to him as long as he's alive. Now, if he dies, she's free to move on, okay? So sin is the very same thing. When we get free from this law, we don't desire sin anymore. Sin is not a desire for us anymore. What we desire to do is please the one that died for us, which is Jesus Christ. So stay on that uh, end of the street, so to speak, which is, is the death, burial, and resurrection, then we won't have to worry about sin reigning over because sin makes us come back again and again and again and again and again. Now, uh, like I'm saying, it's just math, step of mathematics, you know, whichever one that you want to do, you know, whichever one. But you have a choice here, and, you know, I hope you choose a life, and I hope you choose Jesus Christ. But anything outside of that, and I'm afraid that that's, that's, not, uh, that's not of him. It, it's bondage. It, it, it's bondage. And sin is bondage. Something that holds you down, something that keeps you uh, from, from blossoming, something that keeps you from moving up. And this is what the enemy wants right here. He wants us to, to not grow. He wants us to always be in bondage, doing things that we're not supposed to do. And there's a price that we have to pay for, for doing this also. Uh, may not see it now because it rains on the just as well as the unjust. In other words, the sun could come up regardless whether you do right or not. The sun will come up tomorrow if the Lord stays so. But one day at the end, you know, Book of Revelation talk about it, at the end, there's a price that the unbeliever has to pay. And believe me, it's a, it's a price that it's going to be too late to change your mind once, you know, the, the, the call is made. Amen. Someone else can continue. All right. All right. You said, I heard something. You said, if you believe. Uh-huh. How do I know you believe? Because you do what he told you to do. That's it. That's how we, that's how we, that's, it, it's not just believing with your mind. But believe it in your heart. Come on. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and 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 not just believe in your mouth. Because the Bible said the devil believe and tremble. Tremble. But, mm -hmm. but, 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 so that's not just, well, I believe in God. Yeah, everybody believes in a God or God or some yeah. kind of God. So everybody believes in something. You got to believe. And even the atheists. Yeah. You got to first believe not to to not believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to first believe, okay, there's a God, but I don't believe in him. Mm -hmm. But I believe in God. And some atheists try to say, oh, I don't believe in God. But you got to first, first acknowledge, okay, there is a God to so say that I believe in him. Right. And so how do I know that you believe it's because you do what the person tells you to do that you believe in. There you go. Can I get a piece of that? You might come. Go ahead. Okay, not to interrupt you. You can also know how they believe is by their fruits, what they're bearing, what they're doing. Yeah. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. You said it better. Thank you. Thank you. You, you said it clear. Clear it. Okay. Clear it. By your actions, by what you, I believe, I, I, I know you believe because I see what you're doing. Come on. You, 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 you doing, your, your mouth is in coincide with what you're saying. You're not talking two languages. You're uh -oh. saying one thing and doing another. No, you're doing the one thing that you say. Come on. I dude. believe, I believe, watch this. Watch this. I believe I can fly. So you go outside, you jump off a building. As <laughs> long as yeah. you stand on the on the ground and, and, and just stand in there saying, I believe I can fly. And but you're not trying to fly. So who, what are you you ain't proving nothing to nobody. That's right. But if you really believe you can fly, Come you on. go and try to fly. I believe I can walk on water. So guess what? 
you got to go find you some water and walk on it. Come on. At least try because you believe. Yeah. Faith without, watch this, faith without works. Uh oh. You show, show, you show me your faith by your words. I'll show you by my faith by my what? My works. Come on. Yeah. I believe this so much so that I'm going to do it. I'm going to practice it. I'm Come on. Walk. That's right. That's how I know you believe. Mm -hmm. People say, well, I believe in God, but you, do, you don't do what he say. Jesus Come said, on. if you love me, what? You believe in me, you'll keep my commandments. That's right. <laughs> right. Do what I say to do. <laughs> but, it's simple. Right. You you follow you follow you people follow what they believe in. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're not going to Revelations twenty one this week. We're going to go to Ezekiel eighteenth chapter. Amen. Amen. Let's let's get Ezekiel eighteenth uh, chapter. Because I want you to see, I want you to, I want you to see something. And let's start at the 20th verse. You got it? Yes, sir. Let's read the 20th verse and see what it says. Amen. The 20th verse, I'm reading out of my New King James. It says, the soul who sins shall die. Uh-oh. Wait, stop right there. Wait a minute. Did you write this? No, sir. Mr. James, did you write this? No, sir. <laughs> Pastor Mike, did you write this? No, sir. I didn't write this. So here go the rules. Now I told you before. I said, I said this. We we we're trying to get the things of God. And so guess what? Because we're trying to get the things from God and of God, that means we got to play by. His rules. We can't make mm -hmm. up our own rules. We got to do what he say. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. The 20th verse, Ezekiel 20, 18 and 20. I'm going to read it out of King James. It says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're not making this up. Right. When I'm telling you, you can't have no sin. Uh, you can't have no sin. The soul, the person. The, uh, if you don't know what the soul means, the person that. Why should we say it this way? The, the person that sinneth, he shall die. Well, mm -hmm. everybody's going to die, but no, brother, no, sister. You don't want You don't want this kind of death. Right. We're talking about yeah. death. You're talking about death from the natural, from the natural body. Yeah, but but come on. In in your meditation, you go and go back to Revelations in twenty one, and 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 see what it say. Uh, uh, uh about the soul that sinneth, and uh -huh. the different sins. Uh oh. Yes, you shall have your place in the lake of fire. Uh oh. The BBQ. That is the second death. So, so you be careful. Be careful. Be careful what we're reading here, and and be careful what you're thinking and what you where you stand in that. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Read, right. sir. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Okay, okay. My father, if he was a sinner, a man that practiced sins, which he was not, but if he did, and I didn't, I'm not going to hell because of what my father did. That's right. That's right. So so let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. There's no, like my grandmother used to say way years ago, 
She used to say, there's no kinfolk salvation. You're not saved because your mother saved. You're not saved because your father saved. You're not going to heaven because your mother's going to heaven. You're not going to heaven because your father's going to heaven. You got to go. The only way you, you got to go for yourself. Yeah. You got to live. You got to see God for yourself. You got to stand before God for yourself. So just like, watch this, just like this book, this book told them how to do, it's telling us how to do it. All right. That's it. That's it. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Read, sir. Okay. But if a wicked man turns from all his sin... Whoa, 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 whoa. Read this slow, brother. Read, read this slow. Here we go. All right, let's pull the gloves off, Pastor Mike. We're pulling the gloves off now. Let's go. But if a wicked man turns from his sins which he has committed, keeps all my statutes, and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If a wicked man, if you were a sinner, and turn from your sin. Yeah. God said you will live. That's right. It's just that easy. What? That's Come that's on that. now. Go ahead, read. That's it. Amen. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him. Mm. Because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. 22nd verse, 22nd. Go ahead. 23rd. 23rd verse. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked shall die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his way and live? Amen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, all 20, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You lost me for a second, but it just it was me. All his transgressions that he have committed, okay, okay, okay. When you turn and you repent mm -hmm. and come back to God and do what's right, all of that sin that you committed shall be forgotten. All right, go ahead, B. Go back to where we left off at. 23rd. 23rd verse. Do yeah. I have any? Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? Okay? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. God is not. God, God, you committing sin, dying in sin. God said, I'm not happy in that. I would right. rather, I'm giving you the opportunity, I would rather for you to turn from your sins. That's right. Okay, but guess what? It's your choice. I can't make you do it. That's it. God can't make you do it. Mm -hmm. This book can't make you do it. That's you right. got you got to choose. This is the way I'm going. This is what I'm going to do. So the choice is up to you. It's not up to God. Watch this. It's not even up to God. That's right. Jesus said it's finished. <laughs> Amen. On, on the cross. It's finished. That's right. I did we the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost have done all that they can do. That's right. Now it's up to you. That's right. See, That's all it. is in your part. That's it. That's it. You got to do it. Read. Go yeah. ahead. He done done the hard part. Oh, we we got the easy part, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead. 24, 24th verse. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? Watch this. Wait a minute. You was right. You were right. You were doing it right. You were doing it. 
you was living right, you was walking right, you was doing right. That's it. Now, watch this. Now you allow sin to come into your life. Come on. And not you just don't allow sin come to on. come into your life, but you're practicing sin. Uh oh. You yep. you you doing what the people out there who don't know God do. That's right. Preaching, you commit man. fornication, <laughs> you committing adultery, you don't went to lying, you don't <laughs> went to cheating, you don't went to you know you don't went to Vegas and start gambling, uh -oh. you don't start drinking liquor, you don't <laughs> start smoking weed, you don't start you just you just you just uh, uh, but wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, see, brothers, excuse me, but I'm really trying to make it plain, make it plain, so that nobody will be confused of Come what on. he's talking about. Preach it. Turn away from his righteousness and committeth and doeth the iniquity, the abominations, the wicked men. Shall he? Shall you live? Uh huh. You was you was righteous. Now you're not righteous. So shall God? Shall God? Shall God? I'll, watch this. I'll, should watch this. Should God don't punish you like He punished the sinner? Mm hmm. Come on. Come on. You understand that? Do, shall God not That's right. punish Come on. the sinner? Mm -hmm. Because you and you and watch this. If if the sinner is going, if the if, if the, the sinner shall die, shouldn't you die? Come on. That's right. <laughs> the same death of the sinner. Mm -hmm. That's right. You was righteous, but you stopped being righteous. That's it. You stop. Wow. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Okay, I'm going to tell you what's in it for you. You was right, but now you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so now, are you going to get the same pay of the right person? No. No. The nope. answer is no. In English, no. In Spanish, mm -hmm. no. In French, no. In Paswa, no. <laughs> in Japanese, Come on. no. In Russian, no. Whatever language you speak is no. Come on. It's all right. Come on, man. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. That's it. Go ahead, brother. Unless one of y'all want to uh, comment. Mm -mm. That's a very good Me. question, man. Yeah, he lived. That's a very good question. When uh when you've been right so long, you know, been right. And like you say, when we walk out of the realm, you know, the Bible says, you know, the man know to do good and do it if not, it's a sin. That goes back to the twentieth verse. The soul that sinneth it shall die. So that means everyone, not just uh the unrighteous, but the righteous too. It said the soul that sinneth, right? Every one of us got one of them. So yeah. Each one of us, you know, that knows to do good and do it is not. According to this word now, it says, shall he live? That's a very good question. And the answer is, like you say, no way. There's no way to do it because uh, we are walking out of the will of the Lord. Go ahead, Pastor Mike. I'm sorry for cutting. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. You know, if you, I'm just using a hypothetical here. Somebody that served the Lord for let's say 30 years and they were fired up doing walking a lifestyle of holiness and they did a conscious effort choice because it is a choice to turn to go do sin and just wake up one day and just say i'm going to go sin well they would have to have their head screwed on wrong <laughs> for some for some unknown reason, for them to be doing it to begin with. I mean, I'm somebody that's really sold out, and I'm going to use this terminology, and I'm the Lord's really got me on this path. I think uh, the apostle knows where I'm going to go with this. 
But if you're really a bond servant slave to our master, sin is not an option. You're mm, sold out. Right. When when we when we've turned our will and our life completely over to His care, we're sold out for eternity. Yeah. And so we keep yes, Master. What do you want me to do next, Master? Yes, God wants me, Mike Bradford, to use my common sense that He gave me in my uh, mother's womb, and as I grew up, you know, don't cross the road, look both ways before you cross. So you don't get hit by a car or a truck. Don't put your hand, you know, don't put your hand on a hot stove. You know, use your your head instead of a hat rack. You know, use common sense. He wants us to use mm -hmm. common sense. But he wants us to have that daily relationship because if we don't have that daily relationship, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go out and I'm going to really mess up because I'm going to go back into my old self-natured fleshly ways of dethroning God off off of the throne and putting myself back on there like I did when I was in my uh, addiction. You're All cheating. Right. Pastor Mike, you're cheating. Okay, you I'm take, sorry. I'm sorry. You, it, you just took my thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> watch this. See, I'm, I'm going to show you in a second what I'm talking about. And yeah. Then you can jump back in. Yeah. Nobody, no married couple gets, no married couple gets divorced overnight. Come on. That's it. You want it. Okay, you, you, okay, you're not married, but you were dating this person for a year or two, some, you, for a while. Yeah. You don't just break up with them overnight. You don't just mm -hmm. wake up in the morning and say, I'm done. I don't want no more. Right. Your mind has not settled to the place that I'm done. Come overnight. on. All right. What you saying? Pastor Mike just said you were sold out to the Lord. You were living for the Lord. Your daily fellowship. Because you stopped your daily fellowship. There it is. Now you have become vulnerable to the old man. Bring it on. As long as you're in daily fellowship with God, you ain't going nowhere. That's it. <laughs> but when you stop, when you stop and you don't hear his voice no more, y'all don't mm. communicate, you don't talk, he's in one place and you in another place. Come on. Absence make the heart grow fine. That's right. There you go. <laughs> it, absence, absence, I, am, I haven't seen you. Well, guess what? Three months, I'm still, we, we talk every once in a while. Six months, hello, how you doing? Conversation is, hello, how you doing? Okay, I'll see you later. A year, we don't even talk no more. Guess what? We're not together no more. Come on. I don't love you like I loved you before when we were hot and heavy every day. Calling right. me two and three times a day. Uh -oh. I don't love you like I did then. Our relationship is not like that. And so so then God is saying, watch this. God says, but I didn't move. I'm still here. <laughs> you moved. Come on. You moved Please. on. Mm -hmm. You Make went on and 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 fell in love with somebody else. I'm still here. Yeah. No, he fell in love with another god. Uh oh. Yeah, that's right. Uh oh. That's it. Uh oh. And, and was it in 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 Exodus? It says God says I'm a jealous God. I don't want to have any other gods before me. Thou should not have no other. Yeah, thou shall it. have no other gods you, before me. You, you That's should right. not have no other person that you love. Come on. My, you cannot have a, I, I, I'm not going to be your lover and somebody else. Come on. Any, any, any self-respecting man is not going to stay with a woman 
that got three or four other boyfriends. Come on. There you go. On the side. <laughs> no self-respecting woman who got self-respect about herself. Come on. She's not going to deal with a man that got two and three other lovers. Come on. That, uh, come on. I only come to you for this, but I go over there for that. I only come over to you when I need this, but at the other times, okay, okay, here it is. Go she ahead. only comes to me because I'm uh -oh. her sugar daddy. Watch it, now. watch it, watch it, watch it. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Y'all got it. Preach. Uh, I'm her sugar daddy. When she comes to me, she's wanting her money, and God's saying this is what her church comes. The people come. Only for when they want a little bit of money, where they get into a little bit of tight, uh, they call me the sugar daddy. Come, Lord, pay my light bill. Come on, Lord, I need you to pay my rent. Come on. Yeah. But then when when the month okay, so then watch this, watch this. This is the this is the the uh, the 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 uh, the format. For the sugar daddy. Come on. You don't have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. You really don't want a relationship. Come on. But what you use him for is to supply feed. Come on. So I really don't want you. I just want what you got. That's it. Or I want what you can do for me. I don't know. We don't talk. We don't go to the... We don't go to the park. We don't have Come no on, preach it. We don't have no intimate moments. And then when when I want, so, okay, so then, okay, so then when you want God, you gyrate, you shake, and you quake, and, and <laughs> Come on. You, get on the, you get on the stripper pole for God. The jello. <laughs> you, 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 you come and you do all this. Look, God, look, look, look now. Now, okay. Now I don't yeah. finish. You can pay me on your <laughs> way out. Come on. That's all right. That's all right, guys. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't you know. Uh, we we think we think churches is is uh, one of those what do you call them? Uh, uh, them them places. Where the strippers work. Yeah, the club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you think you think so? You go to church and you, you you gyrate, you shake it, and you do all this. And look at look look at me, God. Look at me. Yeah, okay. I am. I am. Look at me. Yeah, I'm oh, looking at you. Look at me dropping it like it's hot. Oh yeah, Lord, here I am. Oh, boogie down, boogie down, Lord. And then, okay, see, I done, I done danced for you. I harped for you. Now give me some money. That's it. That's it. Instead of, instead of, like the old timers, they would come in, the the Quake uh, Quakers, they would come in and get down on their knees. Some of them would get prostate, lay before the Lord, and lay there or stay on their knees in prayer until the Holy Ghost showed up. Then when the Holy Ghost showed up, then they'd have church. It might be an hour or two in prayer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't have that much time. Yeah, that much. that's too much time because I got to get to there. I got a, I got a football game or a, a baseball game or uh, some. I got somewhere to go. I, I can't. Uh, I I got I can only give you forty five minutes today, God. Here, here church stops. No, wait, 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 wait. You said an hour of prayer. That's before service starts. Yeah. Come on, man. That's too much. Time. Whoa, no, God. I ain't got that kind of time. You want yeah. me to come an hour early, okay. so that me you can talk. And here's something that I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the guys with that are listening. How many men? Not women, but men would show up an hour early to pray to intercede for lost souls before church started. Oh, wow. Pray. To pray. You might even get, you can't even get the pastor to come there an hour early. 
Y'all nailing it tonight, Bill. Y'all nailing it. Come on. It. Y'all nailing it. You can't even get the pastor. But, yeah, you can get some sisters to come in there because I've been in there with some sisters and praying and, and praying the Holy Ghost an hour to two hours before service. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. wondering, where's the guys at? Are they at home watching uh, some game that they recorded the night before? They're sure mm-hmm. not down here worshiping God. They don't even care anything about what's going on. All they want to do, they want to meet the sugar daddy here at the door. Make sure oh, they get the, oh, no, no, they no, can no. get the truck in, payment. In defense, in the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand in defense. Okay. For the guys, brother, you know I worked all day, and my boss wanted a couple. He wanted somebody to volunteer. Yeah. That's <laughs> cool. Three hours overtime. Yeah. That's it. And so so by the time that prayer is over, I'll just be getting off from work. Yep. Because my boss wants me to stay. My boss Mm -hmm. wants me to stay. And I got to stay, you know, like you said, I got my truck payment. I got my car payment. Light bill due. Baby need a new pair of shoes. Uh, Mm -hmm. I got all this stuff. So... So the man, the man needs me to pull some overtime uh-huh. on service night. Come on. So let me go there. Let me, I can, I can pray anytime. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me, let me. Let you me don't want me something. to go there, do you? Wait a minute. How many people, or how many times? Have you been on a conversation? Watch this. Wait a minute now. I'm going to hit you both sides. <laughs> How many times have you been talking to a person yep. and they were not paying attention to what you were saying? Come on. That's it. You just run in your mouth and you just, and, 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 and you really just into it and they, they're, they're busy doing something else. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm, busy. I'm I'm doing something else. Yeah. Huh? huh? What 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 you what you what? Can what? you repeat that, please? You say something? Yeah. Repeat that. <laughs> yeah. Can you repeat okay. that again, please? I didn't catch it. Or how many times have you somebody been talking to you, and while you were they were talking to you, you was preoccupied with something else? I've been yeah, guilty. That's right. I've been guilty. And so, how many times have you got frustrated? I've been guilty. Because that person was not paying attention to you. That's it. Amen. That's it. And and you felt, okay, Pastor Mike, so why don't you just hang up the phone and call me when you got time to talk to me? Mm. Come on. This is how we do God. Come on. That's it. That's it. (laughs) Can I? You want you want, you want to be driving? I want to pray while I'm. I can drive. I can pray while I'm driving. You probably could, but guess what? You cannot get into it because you preoccupied yeah. doing something else. You are Amen. not giving God. Watch this. First. You are not giving God nor prayer your full attention. Come on. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, so you. Because you are not giving him your full attention, you are not communicating. Watch this, people that are listening. Prayer is not just you talking. Prayer is God responding and talking back to you. Come on. Hear him speak to you. That's right. That's right. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need this. Okay. Amen. You get up and you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you give him your grocery uh, list of, of what you want, and then you get up and go. And he said, "But wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't Come on. You. Okay. I think you're burning. Can I? How do I get in? I I gotta get into this one. Okay. I want. I'm gonna pray here, folks. I'm gonna pray. I want to do a sample prayer. Dear Father God, my name is Jimmy. Gimme, gimme, gimme. My name is Jimmy. Gimme all you got. 
<laughs> Thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. 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 Uh, my Amen. name is Jimmy. Give me all you got. You know, come on. Gimme, 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 gimme. Yeah, gimme, well, gimme, gimme. Well, it's, it's not, you know, we don't come, we don't come to seek in the face of God. We come uh -oh. to seek that, uh, the most part, not all churches, not all people, but they come to seek the hand of God. He's well, not. He's not a one-armed bandit. He's not a ATM machine. What you got in your hand, sugar daddy? Come on. He's not an ATM machine. Open no, your hand, he just, up, sugar daddy. Come on. Just, uh, open it up. Here at your Home Depot. Yeah. Hey, okay. hey, back up the dump truck of gold. You know. Come on. Back that dump truck up and dump it into my lap. You know. Yeah. I've been. I've been a good. Good man. I've been a good provider. I've been working hard, and I I need I need my light bill paid, and I I've been mm. working at overtime. I've been doing this for you, and I've been witnessing on the job, and I've been doing this, and I've been doing that, and I, and, I, and God's saying you don't have to remind me of what I've been, uh, you've been doing. I've been seeing you do the whole thing, half right. of it I didn't tell you to do. You've been doing it on your own. There you go. There you go. And that's the flip side to the whole story right there. Come on. Jesus wants us to receive these things freely. Come we don't on. have to work. You don't have to work for them. But like you guys were saying, and y'all made some very good examples tonight, this is exactly how we treat him. If I work for you and you'll pay me, if I do this, then you will pay me. He said none of that. You know, if we come to him with our whole heart, that we're just getting got finished reading the scriptures here. What he said when a man, when a wicked man turns come on. And, and, and do what is right, man, he all these things he would do for us freely. We won't have to put on a show. I mean, y'all made a very good example tonight. Putting on a show for the Lord, working your way, trying to work your way to heaven. Ain't no way it's going to work like that. You see, we cannot do that, man. And like some people say, they, they, they don't need him until, you know, they get a, a, a pain. Or whatever, you know, the situation is, you know, y'all made some good scenarios. This is why... He says, I know your heart. He knows everything that goes on. So, you know, people can say all they want to say about they believe him and they are saved and they just and that. But he knows the whole heart. And at the end, we were talking about Revelation or not, at the end, he say, I'm coming and I got my reward with me. I, I got my reward. And to each man, he's going to distribute this reward, you see. So if we done right, then we know what our reward is, heaven. But if we did wicked all our life and try to call it right, try to dress it up and fix it up, paint it like a whitewashed sepulcher, what he calls it, you know, it's white on the outside, but Come the on. inside is all dirty. Hey, we, that's a place of uh, reward for you, too. So, yes, um, y'all got some very good scenarios going here, man. This is a very good lesson. Very, very good lesson. Okay, I got one other thing. Can I inter interject here? That uh, fossil. Can I interject? Go. Uh, I, I was at work and uh, I was uh, uh, doing some work and the Lord uh, spoke to my spirit, uh, go out on the front porch and the next door neighbor is going to come out and he's going to talk to you. And I'm thinking, okay, I, I'll go out there. So I stood out there and I was drinking uh, my uh, jug of water that I have, a little jug of some ice water. I was taking a break and sure enough. This young man, he comes out. It's in an apartment building. He comes out and comes over there and he goes, "Hi, my name is, uh, you know, Tom. Let's say his guy. I don't know what his name was. Now I forgot. His name's Tom." And I said, "Hey, Tom, how you doing?" So we just got striking up a conversation. And Tom, man, he opens up and he says, "Man, I just got back from Denver. I we just got back from the 420 conference in Denver. I." I said, that's the best conference I've ever been to in my entire life. We brought back a lot, a lot of, of goodies to sell to the neighborhood. And I said, really? I said, uh, what, number one, you know, I'm kind of an old guy. You can see, you know, gray beard. And this guy was 23. I said, what is a, the uh, Denver 420, may I ask? Oh, you don't know what that is, sir? I said, no. He said, that's the largest pot convention in the nation uh, for selling pot, marijuana. Mm. And we brought back uh, uh, two pounds of marijuana to sell in the neighborhood. And I said, oh, really? 
Well, I said, uh, Tom, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, uh, do you know Jesus or do you know of Jesus Christ? Oh, yeah. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. <laughs> he says, I, I said, he goes, I said, really? You are, huh? I said, you, you're a born again Christian and you're, you're into pot, huh? And he said, yeah. I says, you know, there's no way. I, he goes, what do you mean no way? I said, you know, I used to be a drug addict and alcoholic. I shared my testimony and I shared my conversion and shared the whole nine yards. And I said, I'm going to tell you something, young man. I said, you can do as you want, but God knows your heart and your heart isn't right. Yeah. Because if you were a true born again Christian, you'd be walking a lifestyle of holiness. And a lifestyle of holiness is not number one, smoking pot, number two, dealing pot. And you would be serving the Lord with all your heart. And you need to repent of your sins. Because if yeah. you died right now of an overdose, you'd bust hell wide open, young man. And I'm trying to tell you right now, you do not want to go there. It's an That's ungodly right. place. And as uh, soon as I started witnessing to him and really getting in deep and hard and telling him the cold hard facts, ah, I got to go. I got to get... <laughs> Uh, my neighbors, uh, the, uh, my roomies are calling me right now. And as the day went on, no, there's no, this, this is no exaggeration. I stopped counting after 30 vehicles stopped at that apartment. Wow. Uh, you know what they were doing, okay? Oh. I don't need to go on over the air telling them. But the gentleman got witness to, the Lord set it all up. That was a setup from the Lord. That was that man's, probably could have been his last time or first time. I don't know. I was just, mm -hmm. the point I'm trying to bring across, I was being led by obedience because I was inside praying why I'm working because I've conditioned myself, which it's possible, uh, Amer uh, Apostle Amerker can tell you, after a while, you walking in the spirit of the Lord, I put myself, it's hard, it's, I, I'm going a little deeper, I guess. I put myself into autopilot, and I get into the spirit realm, and the Lord and I can talk now. I've learned how to do that. And, you know, people might think, well, that guy's going to, you know, put him in the white jackets. But you can get into a place with the Lord after walking and developing a relationship with the Lord where you can have that type of intimacy and, and talk with him. And see, that could have been very crucial time if I just blew it off and didn't do it. You know, the blood of his, his salvation would have been on my hands, uh, yeah. you know, if something happened to that young man. That's all I got. Amen. Amen. Well, you did what was right. You know, you uh, are. You told, you told him what you felt. And like you said, you planted the seed. So maybe someone else would come along and water it. Never and, you know. know the, Lord, the Lord will do the increase on it. So, you know, you, you know that's a very good witnessing, man. You know, just continue to pray, you know, because the neighborhood and stuff is getting wickeder and wickeder every day. Yeah. And um, I'm, I think the same thing about my neighborhood. You know, it's a pretty rough one where I live at. But. You know, uh, Jesus Christ has our back. And, Amen. Uh, you know, I, I just dare one. I mean, not trying to be dogmatic, but I just dare one to come and, you know, sit down and talk with me because, you know, that's exactly what I'm going to put on, you know, because uh, it's, it's about that time. You know, Jesus is holding back his wrath for us to get each and every one that we can to, to be saved. He, he, I think he's holding us back just for that because, he don't want no one to be lost. No That's one right. drug at it, uh, dope at it, they're at it. nobody. The whole mongo, he want everybody to turn. We just got we just got finished reading the scripture. That's right. And we want everybody to turn. So this is uh our mission, you know, to try to get people to change, you know. And Jesus Christ set the stage for uh us to do this, you know. And it's a very simple way, you know, it's the way we carry ourselves, you see. This is why I think Paul was so strict on uh, living the right. right way, you know. Sometimes we the the only Bible people get to read, 
And the way we live, and if we live that way, hey, somebody else might want some of it. And somebody else might want some of it. And after a while, you know, hey, I don't want no pot. I don't want no liquor. I don't want no uh, alcohol. I want what this man here got. Look at him, smiling all the time. And, you know, he, he got it going on. The, the Lord blessing him. You know, he, he, he's got it going on because he's living right. And right. No, no work is involved. You know, this, this is the good thing about it. No physical um, work is involved. We're just doing what the Word says. And that's go ye into all the that's world right. and teach him. You know, and, and what I taught you, and this is what you want us to do. So, it's a very good topic again tonight. That was a very so, good topic. So we're not we're not saved by works. Come on, mm -hmm. that's right. We're that's not right. saved by works, huh? That's what the Bible says. So you can't work your way in. You there you go. We're not JWs. <laughs> like I always say. I want you guys to repeat after me because I want these people to make sure they hear it. Mm -hmm. Say what I say. Standing in your garage. Standing in your garage. Standing in your garage. Don't make you a car. Does not make you a car. Do not make you a car. What are you talking about? Because you go to church, don't make you say. Come on. That's right. That's right. So with that young man, he got religion. He don't have That's salvation. What I yeah. Come on. Religion don't save. It'll take you to hell. Salvation don't save. Conversion save. Come on. You, 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 you got to do, again, you got to do with God's way. And, and mm -hmm. that's another example of no teaching. Come on. This young man can think that he can, he can smoke, sell, distribute. You doing the Obama? That's what we read that just before. You went mm -hmm. back and you doing the abomination. Come on. Yep. yep you, are, that's right. you are destroying not only yourself but other people. Come that's on. Right. That's, that's the thing right. about him selling. Not you're not just like you. It's not that you just smoking for your own recreational activities. Okay, but you are providing sin. And suppose, okay, well, wait a minute. You're supposed to be the man of God, the young man of God, and you're providing, you are the one that is teaching and telling people how to sin. And, mm -hmm. and it's okay to sin. It's okay to sin because look at me. I'm, I'm a Christian, and yeah. if I'm doing it, Come on. When you're supposed to be the light. That's right. You're supposed to be, like they just said, you're supposed to be the the difference. That's you're right. supposed to be showing the people the difference Come on. between sin and salvation. That's right. Holy mm -hmm. and unholy. Clean and unclean. Cool. Right and wrong. That's right. right. Amen, bro. Amen. And then that's the 24th verse again. It just blows you out the water. That young man might be already, he might be saved, but but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and, and commits iniquity, see, he might be saved, but this is what he's doing. Uh, he's turning away from what his mom and dad probably taught him. See? Come on. A, a, a little living, living the whole lump we was talking about. So what he's doing, he, he thinks he's got it in his head, he's saved, but, you know, He's turning away from his righteousness. Shall he live? That's what the scriptures say. <laughs> Shall he live? <laughs> Ask well, himself that question. You know, that was a good thing you should have tried to put on him. We want on the scriptures, but that's a very good question. He need to ask himself. You know, shall you live for doing what you're doing? You know, uh, two pounds of marijuana? Shall you live? <laughs> well, wow. you know, that's just like, you know, like I said, that metaphor of you take the, uh, the worm it's inside the apple, which is that worm is sin, and the apple is the body of Christ. And you put that that apple in a good bushel, and you close it up. Within mm -hmm. a week, you open up that bushel again with all them other apples. You That worm has already uh, reproduced other worms, and it's mm. already ate into the other apples. Mm. And is the sin is multiplied into the other apples of the body of Christ. 
that sin has gone spread rapidly. And that's what would mm-hmm. happen is you've got somebody that is in the pulpit or let's say let's say somebody that is a elder maybe he's not a, a one in the pulpit but he's a respected elder of the church that the younger people look up to let's let's look at this scenario an elder that the younger people look up to he he should be walking a lifestyle of holiness but they see elder whistlebritches down there his car down there at the liquor store <laughs> That's not. And he's not giving out tracks, huh? No, he's inside purchasing a bottle in a brown paper Uh-oh. sack. Uh oh. <laughs> and it isn't a bottle of Sprite either. Yeah. And he gets in the car and drives off, and the ones that he's been witnessing to come by, and sees Elder's uh, Whistlebritch's car there in the parking lot and seeing him coming out with the brown paper sack with the bottle okay now come on you know this is what goes on it goes on continually that's right and this is what's got to stop and uh these people are, are are and then then you've got this is what happened to me when i was younger I, I I seen people in the when I was going to church when my mama was taking me to church I seen a lot of uh, these so called people that were uh, supposed to be model Christians were doing ungodly things I'm thinking man what's even the use you know I really wasn't even saved at that time as a kid you know and uh, so that I, that made me more rebellious. So, you know, that just put me on a deeper end. I'm thinking, what's the use? Come on. That's right. You know, uh, but I, I, you know, that's the reason why it's important. We have to, wherever we're at, we've got people watching us continually, brothers. And you oh, know yeah. that. They, they, there's eyes on us continually from uh, uh, all other people all around us. I feel, I sense that, not feel, I don't like that word, feel. I sense eyes on me continually, wherever I go, watching me, watching what I do, listening to what I say. Mm -hmm. So they can say, oh, I knew that, I knew that. That guy's a, he's a hypocrite, you know, you know, he calls himself a minister. He's on the, he's on the internet and he's supposed to be an internet preacher and he's he's doing saying this. I just heard him say a bad word, you know, a cuss word or something. Uh, you yeah. know, what does he think he is? So, you know, that's the reason why the word says it is quick to hear and slow to speak. You got to mm-hmm. kind of mull over what you're going to say so you don't blurt something out that you got to regret later. Go ahead, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can barely hear you, uh, Apostle. You said it. You said it. How about your husband, Paul? I can barely hear you. I can't hear me. Right now. I can barely hear you. Uh, how about now? Still can barely hear you. Uh, I was saying, let's go back and, and read. Okay. Let's go back and read. So we said it. We said it every way. But I want I want the audience to see it. So let's finish. Shall he we we stop this? Shall he live? Continue to read. Amen. He said, All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed. Because of them, he shall die. All the righteousness that he has done. 
You lived 30 years. You lived 30 years. And now you stop. And went over here and started doing this. You started living this other lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Serving another God. And all of that, God says, I'm going to all the righteousness because you stopped doing what you were supposed to be, what you, uh, you stopped walking according to the way I said walk. That's right. That's going to be forgotten. You won't be, you, you won't get no questions. You won't get no credit for that. <laughs> wow. The race is not given to the swift. Either is it given to the strong. But what? He that keep on doing it, keep on, he that keep running to the end. That's right. That's you right. Gotta pass to the you got a whole piece in You got to pass that finish line. You uh -huh. can't stop in the middle of the race and say, I won. I was cooking this morning. You can't yeah. stop in the middle of the race and, 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 and want credit for running the whole thing. You're right. You got it. Come on. Let's see it. Read. Twenty fifth verse. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair. Mm. Yeah. Here now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Here now, O house of Israel, it is not my way which is fair. And your ways, which are not fair, when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commit iniquity, and dive in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he has died. Okay? In other words, you saying, you saying my way ain't fair, but yet you've done what you wanted to do. We were talking about that the other night, remember? You do what you want to do all your life. You do what you want to do, and now it's time to go to hell, but the law is not fair. <laughs> it's, it's nothing that i done, but what you done, you see. You know, it's our choice. We were talking about that tonight. It's our choice. We are the ones that determine where we go at. We are. I mean, it's plain and simple. Right, right here, you ain't. You know, we cannot say the law is not fair with a good God send someone to hell. He's telling you now. He won't do it. When you go to hell, you go to hell because you want to go to hell. All right? Uh-oh. That's right. Uh-oh. Yes, Y'all going to take me to hell? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you can't stand up in front of God and say, you sent me to hell. Uh -huh. God sent you. God don't send nobody to hell. That's oh, right. You hear me good. God does not send anybody to hell. Here we go, mm -hmm. right here. Look at what he's saying. You were righteous, you stopped being righteous. You mm -hmm. became wicked. You started doing the practice in the wicked. Doing what the wicked said. Mm -hmm. So guess guess what? You sent yourself to hell. That's right. That's right. You did that to yourself. Okay. Here's one. Mm -hmm. What in hell do you want? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Obviously, it's something. Obviously, it's something. Yeah, it has you to be. Really, you really wanted to. You had. You had your. You had. You had your. Watch this. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. You're going to take a plane trip. And, and you go to the airport, you purchase your ticket. You purchase your ticket, you go to the to the gate, and you stand there and you tear up your ticket. You had the ticket. Wait a minute now. You had the ticket bought and paid for. Paper in hand. 
was somewhere between the gate and the the uh, desk, you decided, I really don't want to go. I'm going to tear up my ticket. So then when you get to the desk, the boarding gate, you try to go on, and they say, where is your ticket? You say, I tore it up. Do they have to let you on that plane? No way. Why? You got the ticket. <laughs> Uh-oh. No Uh-oh. proof. Why you don't have the ticket? You choose to tear it up. Come on. <laughs> oh, you who choose, who told you to pick it up? You did. <laughs> you had the ticket, but you tore it up. That's right. And Free you still want them to let you on the plane. Yeah. Come on. Come on. This is what God is saying. I gave you your ticket. Somewhere between the the desk of purchasing the ticket and get into the gate to get on the plane, to board the plane, you decide, I don't want to go. So I'm getting with I'm throwing away my ticket. I'm tearing yeah. it up. I'm giving it away. Yeah. You got saved. God says, right now, you got you coming in. But between that day and this day, you decided, I don't want to do this no more. All right. So, <laughs> so, so, should I let you on the plane? <laughs> Come on. You can't argue. You can't say anything. You can't. You can't fight with the people. You can't. You can't. You can't do nothing. You can't yell and scream and holler. Say, hey, look here, my credit card. Where I bought the ticket. Yeah, we see where you bought the ticket, but do you have your ticket now? Right. That's right. No, no proof. Well, I'm sorry, sir. You can't get on this plane. Right. What you got to do? You got to go back and, and yeah, they, they're going to see in their records. What did you just buy a ticket? Yeah. But what did you do with it? I tore it up. Well, okay. Uh, okay, Mr. S- Mr. Mr. Steven, uh, you're going to have to buy another ticket. Come on. We don't give free tickets here. Come you on. Have to buy another ticket. Mm-hmm. Check this out, Apostle. Check this out. Now, so, this one's going to cost you a little bit more because, you know, we got to go through the trouble that they, they, they uh, set you back in line and give you uh, a, a, another ticket. So you're going to have to uh, pay a little bit more for this ticket. Am I right? Uh-oh. That's very good, this, James. I'm going all the way from the gate back to the to the desk. Come all on. that fucking traveling all the way back over there. And now, like you say, now you get over here to the desk. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Now you got to the desk, and there's a long line. All right. And Come your on. flight is about to leave in 20 minutes. That's it. So you sitting back there hollering and screaming at the people, hurry up, I got to go. Hurry up, I got to go. Wait a minute. You shouldn't have been here because you already had your ticket. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Now, wait a minute. Here we go. Here we go, Pastor Mike. You stand in jeopardy of missing your flight. Uh-oh. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. You missed the flight. So now you standing there at the window looking at your plane taking off. Yep. <laughs> Without you. Yeah, yeah. Because why? Of the foolish mistake. The foolish there stuff you. you did. There you go. That's it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what the Lord is speaking to somebody. Don't miss your flight. That's it. You had the ticket. Don't miss your flight. Mm. Thank Hold you. on to that ticket with dear life. Hold on to it. That's right. You get to the gate and you want us. You want. You want that. You want that stewardess, that flight attendant, whoever's there at the gate. To, 
Uh, welcome aboard. Go ahead on in. Get your seat. Amen. That's it. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead, guys. Close up. Wrap it up. Let's go home. Uh, I'll go, go ahead and you can close this out in prayer then, uh, like usual, uh, Minister James. You know, folks, we've been talking and talking. Don't miss the flight. It's getting ready to take off. It's boarding. Getting ready. To, uh, boarding passes. There is, uh, they're calling the flight right now to heaven. And it's, and it's, uh, it's called sin free. And you've got to repent of your sins to get your boarding pass. And it's making Jesus Christ the person of your Lord and Savior over your life. That's how you get that boarding pass. And then you keep it when you do get it. And then you do hang on to it. And you do that by having a daily relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And making him the Lord over your life. That's checking in with him daily. Staying in his word. And talking to him daily. And having a relationship with him daily. That is the main thing of staying and keeping that boarding pass. Because the moment you start getting flaky, wakey Christian, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, little, you know, uh, I'll do it here, I'll do it there. Guess what? Eventually you're going to lose that boarding pass. And then when it's uh, calling for the flight, flight to heaven. Flight 109 to heaven, the boarding taking all boarding passes, uh, and you're looking. It's too late, and like you said, you're gonna look out the window, and there it goes, and you missed the flight because you did not hang on to that boarding pass. So, folks, stay in, stay in with Jesus Christ, stay in, fight the good fight of faith. Yes, it is gonna be tough. It's this life is tough. But it's easier with Jesus Christ. Minister James. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for uh, the word tonight. We thank you, Lord, for applying it the way it was applied. Hoping and trusting that it touched someone's heart. And we just want to thank you tonight for the insight that you gave Pastor Mike, Apostle Amica. We, we, We just thank you for them tonight. And we ask that. This ministry will continue to grow and grow and grow, that somebody will see you uh, for who you are, Lord, and, and not a man. And we just thank you for grace, and we thank you for mercy. And your word says, when we change, when, when we turn from our wicked way, then you would, would just bless us, and we would live and not die. And we just thank you for those powerful words tonight. And we ask this in Jesus' name, and we say amen and good night. You got any last words, Apostle? Thank you for joining us today. We would love to hear from you. You may contact our ministry offices by calling 754-244-6585. Again, that's 754-244-6585. By writing us, at Deliverance by Faith Ministries, 300 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. Again, that's 300 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. By email, www.deliverancebyfaith2 at gmail.com. Again, that's www.deliverancebyfaith2 at gmail.com. We pray that this broadcast has motivated, encouraged, and enlightened you. Thank you so much for listening.